In a previous video, we looked at determining a shorthand formula for sensible heat as it relates to processes with air, which we have in HVAC processes. And if you remember, that formula ended up being close to 1.1 or 1.08 multiplied by the CFM of air multiplied by the temperature difference. And this was just solely for the sensible portion of heat transfer. So heat transfer that relates to a difference in temperatures. And what we want to do in this video is figure out an analogous latent load formula, which has some constant multiplied by CFM of air, because that's what airflow is typically measured and designed for in the United States, multiplied by some change in absolute humidity ratio. So let me take a second to just draw a quick control volume for our setup. If we simply look at it as a mass balance of water or H2O coming in and out of our control volume of any system, uh, we could say that that the mass flow rate of the vapor, we'll call this state one over here, and this will be the mass flow rate of vapor at state two over here, and we'll have some moisture. Well, for this process, we're saying we're possibly condensing water vapor out. We'll call that M dot W. And from this, we would know that what goes in has to equal what goes out. And so if we wanted to solve for this blue term here, we would have something that looks like, change colors, mass flow rate of two minus the mass flow rate of vapor at state one. And we have this useful tool in our toolkit. If you have watched my psychrometric videos, which I hope you have, you will know something about the absolute humidity ratio, which is defined to be the mass or the mass flow rate of water over the coarse mass per unit dry air. And so what this allows us to do is if we have a, a mass flow rate or a flow rate of dry air, we can get out what the corresponding mass flow rate of vapor would be. So if we take both of these terms and we multiply it by multiply and divide by the mass flow rate of dry air, what we'll get is something that looks like this. So let me not skip any steps. We still have this term. And now I'm going to multiply and divide by the mass flow rate of dry air. If I do times m dot, and let's do that on this term as well. Ooh. What you'll notice now is we have a mass of water vapor over a mass of dry air, and this term right here can be described as omega two, and this term here is omega one, and we're assuming that we're not in this process that the dry air just goes straight in and straight out, and so this mass flow rate of dry air in and out, they are exactly the same, and so we can pull that out of this distributed subtraction here. So let's simplify this a little bit. The mass flow rate of water of either a dehumidification process or a humidification process is just our mass flow rate of air times the difference in the absolute humidity ratios. Now what we we're wanting is a shorthand formula that gets us a heat load, and we want this, these values here to be in units of BTU per hour, or if you were in SI, this would be in watts. So we need to have some factor here that takes this from units of pounds or kilograms and into our 
uh, heat transfer units, BTU per hour or watts. And what we need to do that is a latent heat, heat of vaporization or condensation, however you want to think about it. So if we took this and multiplied both sides, we now had something that had units of BTU per pound mass multiplied by some pound mass per unit time, we'll say per minute or something like this. Actually, let's say hour. And if you do that, you would get out BTU per hour, which is what we want. And so I'm going to go through a similar derivation now. We want to, we have this difference in omegas and we have what we want this to be equal to. So we just need to figure out what this term is and what this term is, except we want to express this flow, not in terms of mass, but in terms of volume. We want a volumetric flow. We want to do this for dry air. And so we did this in a previous video, but I'll do it again. Um, the mass flow rate of air. And we were saying that we want this, this is our, if we want this in pounds per hour, that would be equivalent to if you had some CFM value, we'll just call it a variable like this. And that's stands for obviously feet cubed per minute. And so we need to get from feet cubed per minute to pounds per hour for air. And so there are 60 minutes per hour. And at standard air conditions, we have an approximation here of, we have one pound of dry air per 13.35 feet cubed. And so if I look at this, um, I cancel that foot with this foot cubed, this minute with this minute, I get pounds per hour, which is what I want. And if I do this, what I had left over was a CFM value multiplied by 4.5. And the units on this 4.5, if they had units, a lot of times we'll leave this out in the future for shorthand formulas. That's pounds per hour per foot cubed per minute. So I hope that you notice that this is the CFM value that you put in here is in feet cubed per minute, and that would be at the bottom of this fraction, and what you get back is a pounds per hour value. So that's what we know there. So we can take this mass flow rate of air, and we can replace it with this expression here. So let me do that. And so what I also want to say is that this is equivalent to our latent load, which is what we wanted all along. So if I go Q latent, and we want that in BTU per hour. Remember, this is all got units associated with it. We have 4.5 multiplied by our CFM, multiplied by our delta omega, multiplied by some latent heat of vaporization. So the last step we need is to figure out what should this value here be. And what I have for that is I have a table of a saturated water property. So let me bring that over. So I have that here. And what we're looking for is this enthalpy term right here. And we have an enthalpy as a property. When if you're saturated and you're at this temperature, this pressure, you, if you were a liquid, you'd have this enthalpy. If you were a vapor, you'd have this. And to take yourself from a saturated liquid to a saturated vapor, you need this many BTUs per pound to do such a thing. Now, the value you would want to use would be the value of what temperature this process is happening at. And for HVAC processes, a lot of times a supplier temperature is at 55 degrees and our chilled water is at 45. And so on the cooling coils, when you're actually condensing water out, 50 would be a reasonable bet. And so 1,065 would be a good value, although I've seen people in their shorthand formulas use anywhere up to this value, the 1075 all the way to 1055. So typically a value of 1055 through 1075 BTUs per pound is used. Pound mass will be a little more particular, but for this case, I'm going to use 1065 in the middle, which I believe is probably the best that you could do for this approximation. 
So now let's scroll up here and we can essentially erase this term. Hold on. I'm trying to erase that value right there. It's not working for me. So let me go ahead and let's let's put this in. So we have Q late and, and we'll say this is units BTU per hour is equal to 4.5 and we'll say pounds per hour per CFM multiplied by the CFM that you have for the air multiplied by 1065 BTU per pound and we multiply that by our delta omega or omega 2 minus omega 1 whatever that happens to be in our process and if you notice what we'll get out is BTU per hour that CFM cancels with that that pound cancels with that and we have a BTU per hour this absolute humidity ratio is unitless and so we have our final formula I'll neglect the units here this is going to be around 4,890 multiplied by your cubic feet per minute of air multiplied by your difference in absolute humidity ratio. And so that is our shorthand formula for, for latent heat processes, which will do you serve you well in your endeavors as an HVAC engineer. So hope to see you in the next videos.